guys and welcome to Feywood. So I am actually doing this intro after having done the project. Most of you who follow me and have watched my videos know normally I do an intro before I've started the project. I waffle on about how am I going to get this done, don't know if this is going to work, blah 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 blah. And I did that. Twice. <laughs> and the first time I forgot to turn on the microphone annoyingly and the second time my camera decided not to focus on me whatsoever and focus on my backdrop and the whole thing was blurry and I just couldn't use it so here I am again <laughs> and I'm telling you this just because I'm coming to having had done the project already and speaking it from a it's already finished sort of perspective so there's that. But I really wanted to do this project. I realise it's yet another pair of fairy wings. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> but I'm hoping this is a bit of a public service announcement because I've done some, you know, research and so forth to try and work out a way to make a cheaper pair of fibre optic fairy wings so that they're a little bit more accessible to people who were interested but maybe didn't want to fork out the amount of money that the other pair cost. I was also hoping to make them a little easier to make but unfortunately the techniques that I attempted didn't pan out on this one so I think there's going to at least be one more, um, possibly more. <laughs> I did one more and I did that so <laughs> maybe I'm already anticipating there'll be more than one more pair of fairy wings in my future but I do think that possibly I'll do another one that uh, explores how I can make this a bit easier to do because it's still quite a labor intensive project so bear that in mind if you want to give this a go but I think they're worth it. Uh, now the original pair of fairy wings, if you didn't see them, I'll show some images of what they looked like, but they cost around about the 370 Australian dollar mark, whereas this pair that I've just made are around about the 125-130 Australian dollar mark. So they're about a third of the cost of the original ones. Now that works out around about uh, I think 90 US dollars. Uh, things are going to be yeah. approximate though because that includes postage to myself. I didn't include things like glue and like thread and stuff like that but the major components of the wings I did include in that price so your wire, main components of the wings, the fiber optics, the torch and all of that was included in the price and of course my original pair of fairy wings had the ants on a melon torch which was a big chunk of the cost involved with making them. Now I will say the torch and fiber optic set from ants on a melon is fantastic and it's pre-made and if you want less fuss then that's definitely one way you can go. Um, it does have more lighting options as well. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a comparable torch. The best I could do was like four colors, but you know, if you're trying to uh, save your pennies and you wanted to make a, a pair of wings still, this could be one way to do it that's a little cheaper. Now I decided to make these slightly different to the wing any wings that I've made before, just because I don't want to have another pair of exactly the same fairy wings. So instead of doing like, I guess, you know, a butterfly fly wing this is a dragonfly wing because I haven't done that before and I believe Erin requested a pair of dragonfly wings so this one's for you uh, I did uh, do some metallic threads on there as well they have some iridescence to them so hopefully this fits the bill for the dragon wings dragonfly wings that you wanted so anyway let me stop waffling on about what we're going to do and let's go and do it <laughs> Now I keep all of my cardboard when we buy any big furniture so I used a piece of that to sketch on but you can also print this off using like poster tiling from things like Photoshop and other things. Usually have a print option that's a poster option and you can sticky tape them together and that's great if you're not much of a sketcher as well. And then I just used the template to guide me when I'm bending my wire to get the right shapes that I wanted. Well guys, I thought I'd check in with you. If you can hear that noise out there, it's really coming down outside. It's a cold, rainy, miserable winter day here in Australia. And I'm very glad to be inside in the warmth <laughs> uh, making wings. So these are the wings so far. I've made the structure of them out of wire like I 
do for a lot of my wings. You know, I use sticky tape mostly, and then I also do use like this aluminium foil tape, which is totally optional. It just covers up the other tape and makes it metallic. If you don't have that, honestly, clear tape you can't really see anyway, and I'm, it's just a fussy extra step. Or you could always spray paint it or paint it with metallic paint if you wanted to cover it up. But I mean, if you do want to get the aluminium tape, it was like $10, I think, 10 Australian dollars from eBay for me. So it's not too expensive if you wanted to give that a try and it's pretty easy. So there they are. The diameter is <laughs> quite big. And when I've tried them on, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to have trouble getting around just like I normally do with all my wings. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I wanted to get a sizable wing so that you could get a really good look at what it would look like. Now I think what I'm going to do is actually cover them in the PVC stuff that I got. <laughs> Can you hear that? Loki's just started scratching at the door. I guess he's heard me talking and has decided he needs to come in. I haven't let him in for a bit because I've got my other pair of wings on the floor and I just know he's going to go straight up to them and who knows what he'll do. I've seen them chew through things and like scratch things and all sorts of mischief. So I'm like, no, <laughs> not right now, Loki. Sorry, you'll have to wait. Um, maybe in another project you'll get to see Loki, but right now, no. Nope. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, back to the wings. I figure I'll cover it with this PVC stuff now. I was nearly going to put them all together, but I think it will be easier to cover them first with the PVC. Last step will be really the fiber optic side of things. So I think that's what we're going to do. I am going to try and sew this on the sewing machine a little bit just because I'm curious about whether I can actually get some stitches in using the sewing machine. I think one of you, I think it might have been Ren, <laughs> was it Ren, that had an idea of like doing dragonfly wings with metallic threads. And so I thought, oh, that could be interesting. Uh, so we'll see if that works. So I'll try sewing this. I'll let you know how we go and, um, and then we'll attach them to the wings. So I decided to use this window decal stuff and as you can see when the light shines through it it has this beautiful holographic look to it. So I thought this would be perfect for a pair of fairy wings. Success! I can stitch on it! <laughs> Now it's got a protective covering on it so make sure to pull that off first before you start stitching and I just wanted to make some markings about where the wings are so that I could keep my stitches exactly where I want them. Now you've seen me use this presser foot before, it's a freeform stitcher foot that you can put on your sewing machine so you do need that to get this sort of stitching happening uh, and if you don't have a sewing machine possibly skip the stitches. So I've been at this all day and this is where I've got to. I'm pretty happy with the progress. I've now attached the wings. I've tacked them on. I might actually still sew around the edge uh, with some stitches just because I want to make sure that everything's really well attached. Uh, so I probably will do that. But you know, if you didn't want to do that, you could definitely just tack it on with some super glue like I did or hot glue or something else like that. Just be careful when it comes to your fiber optics. Do not have those glues anywhere near your fiber optics because we all know how that went for me last time. So public service announcement, don't use glue that warms up new fiber optics only for this part. Um, and I did some like stitching and I don't even know if you can really tell because of the light that's shining on that, but I've got some golden stitching on there to kind of mimic the look of dragonfly wings. Now I wasn't like super precise about it. In fact, I wanted it to kind of look sketch like instead of, you know, super, super precise. And uh, I didn't try and match the wings exactly or anything like that because I was basically keeping the circles in line with the um, wing ribs. <laughs> I still never know what to call those. Like the spines, the bones, they're not really bones. What are they? 
the wing shape thingies. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I just kept the circles like in line with those. Which you can't really see. <laughs> sort of. You can sort of see it if I like angle it in such a way that the light doesn't reflect off it too much. Anyway, that part's going really well. Now what I want to do is have a look at the torch itself. So this time round, as you know, I'm using a torch separately from the fiber optics. I bought these separately and intend to try and attach them. Um, again, I need to be careful with glue and things like that. Uh, some people have used things like a heat shrink on this and I don't have any of that. I'm unsure how that goes, like does that cause any issues because heat again with fiber optics, but possibly not. If anyone's done that, put it in the comments. <laughs> I've not tried it and I don't have any. So instead, I'm going to try, I think, this, oh, oh, this is, this could all go horribly wrong. This is the part I'm really nervous about, I'll be honest. I've got electrical tape here and I'm thinking that I might be able to um, tape the fiber optics in but then reinforce it with some white glue. Now the white glue will need time to dry and so forth, so I'm not going to be able to do much more on these today. But yeah, I'm next going to tackle this and see if I can work out any way to try and attach them together. Now what I have also realized is that the length of these is just comically long for what I need for the wings. And so... <laughs> I think I'm going to cut these in half so that I have a thicker bundle uh, because I've worked out that that should work quite perfectly. So that's what I'm going to do. Now um, you want a really sharp blade apparently for cutting these. I have a really nice sharp blade. I might need to just um, use my uh, sharpening stone just to make sure it's super sharp or change the blade out just to make sure again that I get a nice good cut because if you don't get a good cut the light might not go through very well so that's what I want to be careful about. You also have to be careful with the glue obstructing the ends so that the light can still get through basically and you're not obstructing the light. So lots of things to consider. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm pretty nervous about the outcome of this. Wish me luck, guys. I hope to God that I don't come back and go, you know, oh no, something went wrong. I mean, it, it's likely. <laughs> but I hope not. <laughs> I decided to use some electrical tape just to make it a bit easier so I just wrapped that around on either side of where I was going to make the cut and that way when I actually cut through them the fibre optics won't go everywhere it'll hold them together. Now unfortunately I found a blade didn't work too well with this. I cut about halfway through and then it just wouldn't really work so I just used some scissors. And then I did want to do some stitching around all of this just to really keep it uh, really secure. So I used a fishing line stitches and stitched about one centimeter apart, just tacking it on, nothing fancy. I feel like I say this so often, but it's a week later. <laughs> so I was trying all the ways I could think of to attach the fiber optics to the torch and I wasn't going to use heat shrink because I was concerned about, I don't know, the heat, I guess. Even though other people had said they use that uh, when I was like looking up other methods to connect things. Uh, some people had said you, they used heat shrink for fiber optics. So I guess it works for some people. I hope it works for me because I got some. I tried so hard with like the tape. I had like electrical tape that I was trying to stick on there. Long story short, I decided to go for heat shrink. I've got two thicknesses. This one apparently I think is 2.5. It's, it looks like bigger than 2.5, but I think because it's flat. So it's 2.5 diameter. I figure I'll uh, cover the end of the fiber optics first with some heat shrink just to hold all the fiber optics together in a bundle. 
and then uh, this one is five centimeter a little bit more difficult to find but I found this at J car if anyone's in Australia otherwise I guess just search for five uh, 50 millimeter heat shrink you can find it it, it does exist and this was about five dollars I believe and I don't know how much this was because Dan picked it up for me so <laughs> mystery mystery amount don't know it's a long piece too it's much longer than I need but so I think I don't know I might go away and watch a video on how to use heat shrink I know how to use heat shrink but I've not done it and I just want to really be sure going in I have this thought in my mind that if I'm not careful and I just go in balls to the wall <laughs> with my heat shrink that somehow I'll melt the fiber optics and make a big fat mess of it so I don't want to do that so I'm gonna look up a few videos if I can find any on people using heat shrink see if there's any tips I need to know about and if I find any key nuggets of wisdom I'll make sure to share them with you guys as well so the main thing I found was just to heat the heat shrink evenly all the way around and just be super careful when you're heating near the fiber optics. Um, I used some cardboard to try and shield it from the heat at times. Now I did use some sticky tape just before doing the larger heat shrink, just to tack it in place while I was shrinking it all together. It did take a little while for this heat shrink to shrink enough and I did have to be really careful when I was close to those fiber optics because you can see I did bend a few there. Now I found this one didn't shrink quite as tight as I wanted so I actually went in again with some of the two and a half centimeter diameter heat shrink just on the end so that it would really hold that end together and really clasp in those fiber optics. Now when I was doing the harness part at the back, I just really incorporated the shape of the torch so that I knew where the torch would sit. And I'm just using that fence wire like I always do um, and doing a U-bend on this one. And to make it look a bit nicer I covered it in some ribbon and I ended up deciding to cover the torch itself in ribbon and then eventually attaching the whole thing with the ribbon as well just to keep the color the same really um, I'm not sure I like the way the ribbon looks in the way that it attaches the torch to the wire so I ended up later covering that with um, some decorations but it worked as far as holding the torch in place and the battery opens at the bottom so I just made sure I didn't glue that down with any anything and it's uh, and I could get in and out with the battery if I need to. Now again I used my uh, fishing line just to attach the fiber optics at the base there and then started to arc them around and use glue and clasping them down in place. I just have these little alligator clip clips that I often use to clip things in place and I actually used a lot of sticky tape to hold things in place while it was gluing. Now I was pretty sparing with this glue. I didn't want too much glue because it doesn't look great but I just needed it in key spots to hold them and then I uh, slipped the fiber optics underneath the stitches to hold them in place. And when I pulled the tape off, there was a little bit of mess, so I just uh, used my methylated spirits to wipe that clear. And then to protect all of the fiber optics, I've gone in with this car vinyl stuff. It's a bit thicker than other contact papers, but it does have that tackiness as well. I still did need to stitch this down though. It just unfortunately wasn't quite tacky enough to grab as much as I needed. Well, I finished one wing and as far as saving you guys time, that's been a bust so far. It's taking a really long time. It's taking the same amount of time it took last time, except that I have a better understanding of the glue to use. So I have been using a different glue, which is this craft glue. I have found this one is working okay. 
no issues. I did test it beforehand. Uh, I realised this might be a glue that not everyone can get. And it might make it a little bit brittle, to be honest. It, it's not going to matter in the end if it is a bit brittle, as long as it's not too brittle, um, because it's going to be protected. But it, just so that you know what's in the glue, it's got a vinyl acetate polymer, 30 to 60 percent. Uh, I don't know why it's got a, a range. Maybe it depends on which batch you get. Uh, it's got ethanol, alcohol and acetone. Now as always I use a little bit of sandpaper to sand the fiber optics to get the light to come out but just make sure you think about where you want the light to come out because if you have too much coming out close to your light source it won't come out at the very end of the fiber optic. And I did stitch that vinyl on, as I said, but I didn't film it, so I just did a tacking stitch around that vinyl when I was done. Uh, and then hot glue some flowers just on that ribbon because I didn't love the look of it. Um, and once I put the flowers on, I really liked it. And there it is, guys! Now, I attach these with what they call grunt straps in Australia. They're these little clamp straps that you get for packing away things and so forth. I'll link them so that you can see what I used. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you'll give it a go. And I hope this is helpful because it's a little bit of a cheaper way to make a really cool pair of fiber optic fairy wings. Subscribe if you want to see more creative awesomeness from myself. And for the rest of you, I'll see you next time in Feywood. Bye, guys.